talk analytics, shall we? Mike Kelly joining the show. And Mike, Marc-Andre Fleury gave what what most people would say looked like a pretty soft goal to Dylan Dubé, who will take it all day because I believe his shooting percentage was like 2% before that goal. (laughs) But when you saw it, what did you see on that play? I saw the same thing, Jackie, where I said, this is a reigning Vesna Trophy winner. How does that shot go in? But you're right. There was a little more to that shot than met the eye when I slowed it down and watched it again. I found this really interesting. So it looks kind of like Flurry maybe loses his angle, maybe misjudges the shot. But when you watch Dylan Dubé's release, watch where the puck is as he gets set to shoot it here. It's on the outside of his blade, right at the tip of his stick. That can't go anywhere other than blocker side until he hooks that top hand in and pulls it across his body, sending it glove side. So when you're a goalie, you're reading the shot before it leaves the stick. And everything about that shot, when it started, looked like it was going short side blocker until he hooks his hands in and sends it glove side. That's why Fleury's frustrated. That's why Fleury gets beat on that shot. It kind of handcuffs him a little bit. And then it made me think about the only other goal Dubé scored this year, which came against Casey DeSmith on the other wing, where he goes in and does the same thing. As he gets set to release the shot right here, he opens his blade up. That's going blocker side until watch that top hand again. Hooks it in and sends a glove side, handcuffs a goalie. So when I was watching the goal, I thought the same thing you did, Jackie. How does that shot beat (laughs) Flower? But you go and look at it. There's a lot of deception in Dylan Dubé's shot, and it's something we got to give him some credit for. Give the shooter some credit on this one. And something that other goalies can be aware of the next time they say see Dylan Dubé flying in off the wing. Yeah, a little last-second deception uh, there from Dylan Dubé. If he keeps doing that, maybe his shooting percentage uh, (laughs) will go up. A player that doesn't need to worry about that, Connor McDavid, uh, saw his 17-game point streak come to an end last night. EJ actually predicted it on the show because of who the opposite... I know, crazy, right? I was like, nah, he's going to go like 31 games. (laughs) I was very optimistic. But uh, he was against the Dallas Stars. How were they able to shut down the best player in the world? Well, EJ knows what's up because Dallas is a very good defensive team. Well, when they're playing at their best, we know that. But the Stars did something to the Edmonton Oilers no team has done or come even close to doing, and that's keep them to single-digit slot shots. This is a team that averages a ton, and these are their lowest games this season in terms of generating shots on goal from the slot. They only got to four against Dallas. There were green sweaters everywhere. But the biggest thing was Miro Haskinen and the job he did shadowing Connor McDavid. There are not a lot of players who can skate with Connor McDavid. Miro Haskinen is one of them. This guy is an elite skater. Whether it was defending off the rush, trying to keep him to the outside when McDavid had the puck in zone, he was all over him. And it helped set up a little bit of offense too, some chances. So that was the big takeaway that I had from this game is that nobody has shut Edmonton down. Nobody has shut Connor McDavid down. Obviously, he scored a point in every other game until this one. The way that Dallas did and the way that Miro Haskinen did, he did a fantastic job against the most dynamic offensive player in the NHL. And it goes beyond him. Obviously, you got to give a lot of credit to the team as a whole. They just played such a suffocating game against Edmonton. They certainly did. And unfortunately for me, the streak ended and I was very, very wrong. But uh, let's talk about the call. <laughs> I don't like when I'm wrong, Mike. But uh, the Colorado Avalanche, they're finding a way. And Nazem Kadri really right at the center of it offensively. We know he's a good player. He was taken seventh overall for a reason. But what are you seeing in terms of how he's been able to create so much offense? Well, a few things are working in his favor, Jackie, and you're right a lot, too. I watch the Feisty Friday segments. You're usually pretty spot on with those things, so give yourself some credit. Um, Nazem Kadri, a few things working in his favor. Nathan McKinnon's out of the lineup. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. I want to focus on one thing, which is what he's doing off the rush. These are the percentage of his zone entries that lead to a shot on goal. Almost 50% of the time, he carries the puck into the offensive zone. Colorado's getting a shot. That's the best among anybody in the NHL at five on five. He is a dangerous shooter. He is a dangerous playmaker. And that's one thing that I've noticed a lot. Uh, You go back nine games, he's got 19 points. His last five, he's got 13, all with Nathan McKinnon out in those five games. But he is able to create offense by shooting the puck himself off the rush. And he's a really gifted playmaker. It's something I don't think he maybe gets enough credit for. One of those things that's helping him generate more offense, playing on the second line with Burakovsky and Nachushkin, Nachushkin's the guy uh, that's there for him this year that wasn't there last year. And he's a power forward in every sense of the word. He can go in and dig pucks, do some of those things that Nazem Kadri can also do, but open up more space for Kadri to be an offensive player. 
Kadri's loose puck recoveries are down in the offensive zone. He's not doing that as much, but he's making more plays, and he's uh, obviously generating a lot more offense. The biggest thing, too, is opportunity. He's playing two minutes more a night than he was last season. So he has been uh, a real treat to watch for the Colorado Avalanche just in all the different ways he can affect the game, especially offensively. Yeah, fantasy owners loving the production from Nazem Kadri. Oh, do you really? <laughs> Amazing. Well, congratulations to you, sir. Right, uh, you. Enjoy that production. All right, see ya.